Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, uh, in this session, we will talk about the phase noise in ring oscillators. So, we have so far uh, learned how to design uh, full swing ring oscillators. Okay, and now we will look at phase noise in ring oscillators. At least to understand how these sources uh, of noise affect your output jitter. Okay. So, consider that you have uh, inverters in the ring oscillator that is what uh, we all know and they are all controlled by the supply voltage whether that is regulated or not it depends. So, you have this. You pick up any one inverter let us say you pick this inverter. So, what you have is P MOS and N MOS and it is loaded by another inverter by the way. Uh, in this case, it has this VDD and you have output here. So, I will mark this as VDD. Let us call this as A, B and C. So, I am modeling all the capacitor which you have here like this C capacitor. Okay. So, if you consider only this inverter, let us consider two cases when first case is for this inverter I will take B is equal to 0. This is 0 and it changes from 0 to 1. right? So, when it changes from 0 to 1 for easy understanding I will say let us say you have this change from 0 to 1 like this 0 to VDD in our case. right? So, when you have 0 to VDD at that time the C when B was 0 C would be high. Okay. So, here I will consider that V changed from B from 0 to VDD this is just a signal which I am showing you and when this happens your NMOS gets activated and your PMOS is turned off. So, what happens is when PMOS is turned off I can say that okay, this particular MOSFET is turned off, then you are effectively discharging the capacitor with NMOS whose input has gone VDD. When you are discharging this particular capacitor from 0 to VDD, ideally if the current uh, in the NMOS is the only current source which discharges this capacitor to ground then no matter whether the transition comes now or transition comes sometimes later you would always discharge in the same way. Okay? If the current to the MOSFET without any noise if the MOSFET follows whatever whether it follows linear such saturation or any uh, particular equation, any particular relation. If that remains fixed, then the transition from VDD to 0 will always happen at fixed interval of time T T. But what happens in reality is that this MOSFET comes with a noise source. Whenever this MOSFET is active, it has a noise source. When you have a noise source, this transition point changes. It sometimes it can be like this, sometimes it can be like this, it will keep on varying. This transition will keep on varying. And this transition itself is the whatever transition you are having from VDD uh, to 0, this zero uh, midpoint crossing of the midpoint is the reflection of that how much the phase deviates or whether there is uh, an error or not in the midpoint crossing in the clock. Okay. So, all the uh, in case of clock we always look for the time instant of transition okay. whether from 0 to VDD or VDD of 0. So, here in the presence of noise this transition will change. right? I showed you initially that okay, you have a straight uh, line like 0 to 1 going 
uh, in a fixed manner uh, or in zero amount of time, but okay, you will are going to have rising edge like this. In response to this rising edge, ideally your falling edge should be whatever it is, it should always be fixed. If the rising edge is fixed, the falling edge should also this TD should be fixed. But what happens in the presence of noise because when you are discharging the capacitor, the instant time instant at which this voltage will uh, reach VDD by 2, it depends on the current in the MOSFET and the noise also, uh, noise of the uh, MOSFET will also play a role. So, what do you see? You see something moving like this or sometimes it is like this, uh, these things keep on changing and it is random, it is not fixed. At one instant of time it will be uh, delta 1, other instant of time it will be delta 2 and so on. Okay. So, this is how the transition, uh, the noise affect the clock transitions when you are charging or when you are discharging in both the cases. Then what happens is that uh, uh, let us say when you have discharged the capacitor at that particular instant of time the input has reached VDD and the output is actually this output has reached to ground also for C naught the output is equal to 0, 0 volt. Okay? But if you look at it you have uh, this particular NMOS transistor whose gate overdrive VGS minus VTH is VDD minus VTH is this, this is like uh, uh, good amount of gate overdrive, right? So, the reason that there is no uh, current, right, uh, be is because VDS is equal to 0, okay? Now, there will be some kind of leakage current or VDS depending on that VDS voltage is absolutely 0 or not 0, you can say you still have some noise even during this phase when the output has saturated either to VDD or it has saturated either to ground. Okay. When it is cut off that is a separate case, but when you are uh, uh, when you have uh, this uh, uh, in the off state with VDS equal to 0 at that particular instant of time also or during that duration you have some noise current through the transistor and that noise current you can think that during all this high time it is getting filtered by the capacitor. So, depending on this filter bandwidth you will have residual noise at the capacitor. So, for example, if just you take one particular inverter from going from B to C, okay, so this is our B signal depending on the noise current your C signal will vary either this way or it can have this also or something this also, okay. anything can happen. Then ideally we think that this voltage should be 0, but this voltage will not be 0 because the NMOS transistor it has uh, VGS minus VTH which is greater than 0, there will be some current and if you look at absolute value it might be some fixed value. Then in the next cycle when your B goes from uh, low high to low in that particular cycle it depends on what was the previous value, what was the previous value from which it starts ramping up. Okay. So, surely this, this transition will change, but the absolute value of the voltage at node C will depend on the noise which is filtered on the capacitor during all, high, all time high or all time low mode. Okay. So, the noise is affecting in two ways, one during the time of charging and discharging the capacitor at, its, uh, at the inverter output, uh, depending on the noise your midpoint will change or your VDD by 2 or transition point is going to change. Second thing is that 
when the input is held high or input is held low during that time the gate overdrive of both PMOS and NMOS transistor is greater than 0, they will conduct some amount of current which is going to change the voltage at the output and this will affect the next transition cycle because the absolute value from where it starts changing from either 0 to VDD or VDD to 0 that will, uh, uh, that will depend on the initial value and that initial value depends on the noise which is filtered on the capacitor. So, these are the two noise sources uh, which are present in the uh, ring oscillator. Okay. Now, after going through lot of maths which uh, we will skip uh, for this discussion, after going through lot of maths you have the phase noise only due to thermal noise. So, let me just write it single sideband we will uh, uh, use the formula which has been uh, which was derived earlier uh, by uh, other authors ok. So, single sideband phase noise only due to thermal noise for ring oscillator phase noise due to thermal noise also. What is the thermal noise? Thermal noise is uh, for the MOSFET it is like 8 kT by 3 gm ok. Uh, which is a white noise which you have. So, single sideband phase noise is equal to 2 times k t by i into 1 divided by v d d minus v t gamma n plus gamma p plus 1 divided by v d d into f naught by f whole square ok. So, let us uh, try to make sense of each uh, term here k is Boltzmann constant this is for a ring oscillator ok. So, uh, inverter based ring oscillator Boltzmann constant T is temperature in Kelvin right. VDD is the supply of the oscillator, supply voltage of the oscillator, okay. And in this particular derivation, uh, we have used VT as threshold voltage for PMOS and NMOS both. So, let me just write it uh, first and then differentiate between NMOS and PMOS. So, threshold voltage. Okay. In such a way you can say V T n threshold voltage of n MOS is equal to minus mod V T p which is the threshold voltage of uh, uh, P MOS or mod V T p not minus mod V T p is equal to V T. This is uh, under this the derivation is under this assumption. Now, gamma n and gamma p they are technology constant and they for NMOS and PMOS are technology uh, constant for NMOS and PMOS ok. Typically your gamma n and gamma p both are between 2 by 3 and 2. They take 2 for short channel MOSFETs in general. Okay, F naught is the oscillation frequency. Okay, and F is the frequency offset from the oscillation frequency. Frequency offset from oscillation frequency. Okay. I is the average current in the ring oscillator. Okay. So, whenever we talk about the uh, phase noise I have discussed earlier that uh, phase noise you can think about it as a power spectral density of the phase error right uh, for the uh, oscillator. So, here 
if you think uh, if you look at it yeah, your phase noise is directly proportional to f naught square by the way this is noise so the units are in power okay so if you want if you have this expression and you want to plot the the uh, phase noise uh, in dbc per hertz then you take this value and take 10 log of this uh, particular expression okay that will be phase noise in dbc per hertz so with respect to free we have plot always with respect to frequency offset here okay so uh, don't think that you will have this uh, particular formula will apply when you have f equal to 0 also no that will not apply so it is slightly f is always larger okay this derivation is a simplification of the phase noise uh, in ring oscillator so it is not like okay this will be the exact value which you will simulate and get it it's uh, simplification but it is a very good approximation of the phase noise in ring oscillator so if i take 10 log to the base 10 of the phase noise expression which you are seeing on the left that is normally plotted in dbc per hertz units and this may typically be depending on it may be something like this okay so here if i look at it uh, it is directly proportional to f square which means if your output frequency increases right for the same jitter you may think that the phase noise will actually that will also increase okay and uh, you double the frequency if i double the output frequency right my phase noise will increase by four times and your phase noise in dbc that will increase by 6 dbc okay then the other thing which you look at here is it is inversely proportional to f and when we say inversely proportional to f that is what you also see here that the phase noise keeps on decreasing it is like minus 20 dv per decade the thermal noise right this the phase noise is also inversely proportional to from this expression only inversely proportional to current and inversely proportional to vdd so if i say I have an oscillator where I am getting some amount of phase noise. If I double the current, if you increase the current to two times, then what will happen? The phase noise will come down by 3 dB. Doubling the current will reduce by 3 dB. Okay. Similarly, uh, if you are able to uh, double the power supply VDD, without increasing the current then also the phase noise will actually reduce so if you have an ox if you have the same oscillator operating at lower supply voltage and higher supply voltage with same amount of current uh, you will have a lower phase noise for the higher supply voltage and if you think about it the power consumption has also doubled so to improve the phase noise you have to uh, spend more power okay uh, an interesting thing here is that the phase noise is independent of number of inverters in the ring independent of number of inverters in the ring ok. So, what actually happens is when you have more number of uh, inverters in the ring at uh, that time you have actually more stages to contribute to the noise but at the same time uh, this is something which we saw earlier also at the same time rising and falling uh, of uh, inverters right each transition time is actually also lesser if the oscillator is oscillating at the same frequency. So, we are talking about if you have a ring oscillator oscillating at same frequency right whether with 3 inverters or you have with 4 in 5 inverters let us say 
okay. So, 3 or 5 inverters, if the output frequency is same, if VDD is same, then what you will see is the one with the 5 inverters or 3 inverters, they both will have the same phase noise, okay. So, what we normally do is if we know that uh, what are the parameters which will uh, help in increasing or reducing the phase noise, uh, we can very easily uh, do our system level analysis. For example, we design an oscillator which gives me this phase noise in black, okay. And I do my system analysis. After doing my system analysis, I find that I have to reduce my phase noise, okay. So, reducing the phase noise, looking at this expression, I know, okay, if I want to reduce the phase noise, if I double the current, my phase noise will actually reduce by 3 dB. So, without going back to your circuit simulation, you can in reduce your phase noise by 3 dB everywhere. So, let us say this particular oscillator has phase noise as uh, minus 85 dBc per hertz at 1 megahertz and I want to increase, uh, I want to reduce the phase noise. What I can do is I can just take the copy of this oscillator and Effectively, in circuit also it will work pretty well, okay. I just take the copy of this oscillator and make connections as I am going to show. So, output is connected to output, supply is connected to supply and each node is connected, right. If you do this, what you are doing is uh, you are doubling the size or doubling the power consumption. So, power doubles here, power is doubled and phase noise drops by 3 dB, okay. So, this is something which you can always use. Similarly, if you see that, okay, the, the oscillator which I have designed in circuit, for that my phase noise which are where I am getting that particular phase noise is uh, lesser than what I require, then I can reduce the power consumption and by reducing the power, I can reduce the power consumption. If I do this scaling of 1 is to 2, I half the sizes of my, half the size of the MOSFETs in the ring oscillator, power consumption will be half, oscillator will still oscillate the same frequency and phase noise will increase by 3 dB, okay. So, you can use this uh, formula for design. Now, the there is a flicker noise also, uh, the one which we have seen is only with the white noise or thermal noise, okay. Uh, you also have flicker noise for the MOSFETs and flicker noise is uh, 1 by F noise for each uh, MOSFET, okay. So, I will just write it the single sideband phase noise due to flicker noise and both these noise sources are present, okay. So, it is not that only one is present, but the analysis for both of them is actually different because the way they affect the transition is different. So, the phase noise output due to flicker noise is C ox dash divided by 8 m i times mu n k f n divided by l n square plus mu p k f p divided by l p square times f naught square by f q, okay. So, the first big difference between the thermal noise and the phase noise is this uh, flicker noise is f q. Previously, the phase noise was reducing with respect to 1 over f square, right. Now, it is reducing 1 over f q. Let me define all the terms here. So, C ox is capacitive per capacitor per unit area. This is your gate oxide capacitor. So, per unit area for gate oxide, okay. Uh, M is the num M is a M inverter or M stage ring oscillator. So, there are M inverters in the ring. So, you see that uh, flicker noise, phase noise due to flicker noise actually depends on the number of inverters in the ring. 
then mu n and mu p they are the mobilities for uh, n mos and p mos okay ln and lp they are the length channel length for n mos and p mos okay f not you know is the frequency uh, output frequency and f is the frequency offset okay and kfn and kfp they are flicker noise constants for uh, nmos and pmos flicker noise constants for nmos and pmos okay i is the average current through the oscillator okay so uh, what you see here is that if see other than f not square f cube right it is inversely proportional to the current you increase the current and the flicker and the output phase noise will reduce so if your flicker noise starts dominating you should see which of the factors starts dominating and ln and lp you can target them by increasing ln and lp both okay so, if you increase the length of the channel, the flicker noise drops. If you increase the number of stages in the ring oscillator while making the oscillator to oscillate at the same frequency for the same current, then also flicker noise is going to drop. Okay. So, when you plot the phase noise of the oscillator, you will see it has both these components and if I draw them independently, maybe you will see flicker noise components going like this and your thermal noise components may be going like this. So, well you will not see them independently, what you will see is something like this. Okay. Fine, it will be like this only. So, wherever your flicker noise corner is, flicker noise uh, is equal to your thermal noise you can call that as a flicker noise corner okay so depending on your pll bandwidth you would like to push this pll noise uh, flicker noise corner to a lower frequency okay so in one case uh, you can think that if my flicker noise corner happens to be uh, quite large that means i am having something kind of this right if the noise is some value like this, then you would see if you keep your PLL bandwidth much smaller, let us say PLL bandwidth is much smaller, then uh, you will not be uh, able to suppress the noise properly. Okay, So, let me just take two examples and show you why this flicker noise corner is important. So, here we know that the noise transfer function of the VCO is 1 by 1 plus loop gain, which is actually a high pass transfer function, something like this. Okay. It is a second order, which you see, uh, right. And then you have your uh, flicker noise 1. So, one uh, flicker noise I am going to choose let us say let us just pick up this curve itself. Okay, This is better. So, in one case I choose let us say something like this okay. and then in another case I am choosing a value like this confusion. So, you can have noise like this, right. So, it is number 1, 
number 2 and number 3. So, this is the phase noise you have for the ring oscillator and the noise transfer function for the VCO is shown to you here. Now, you can see that in the case 1, uh, you have a lot of noise uh, actually passed, right? Because and the flicker noise corner is somewhere appears to be somewhere here, for this case it is here, for this case it is here, right? So, suppression in case your flicker noise, so this is like a 0 dB line for loop gain for noise transfer function, okay? So, when you have uh, by the way, this is going at the rate of plus 40 dB per decade, this goes at plus 20 dB per decade, but if you see for the phase noise in one, you are passing the phase noise as such to the output. In the second case, you are suppressing the flicker noise by some amount using a lower value, whereas in the in this case, you are suppressing the phase noise a lot with a much higher suppression a much higher value. So, depending on where your flicker noise corner is with respect to your PLL bandwidth, right, you will have the suppression of the phase noise. So, when you are designing the os when you are designing a PLL, uh, you can look at this uh, uh, the phase noise of the oscillator at the current or you can say the exact position of the flicker noise corner with respect to the PLL bandwidth okay, or with respect to the bandwidth for the noise transfer function of VCO. Based on that you can take a call whether you need to reduce the flicker noise or not. Reducing the flicker noise by increasing the length of the devices is not uh, is not coming without any trade off because as soon as you increase the length of the device to make it oscillate at the same frequency you also have to increase the width of the device right to keep the same delay like W by L ratio same for the MOSFET. If you increase width and length of the device both, device both, then you are increasing the overall capacitance for the inverter. And when you increase the overall capacitance for the inverter, you will increase the for the same supply, you have to burn more current, okay. So, that is the trade off which you will see. Uh, these two formulas are quite good uh, to understand the noise contribution of different transistors and uh, which particular parameter we should target to reduce the phase noise, okay? Thank you.